Hello and welcome once again to another historic ball video. Today we are featuring Boja Joseph the Conclave. He is a 5 mana cost Naya legendary wolf that has vigilance, trample, and ward 3. And when Boja attacks, you put X plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control where X is the number of elves you control and draw X cards for each wolf you control. Now, let's ignore the wolf aspect of his ability because the elf trigger is the most deadly. So deadly, we can end the game in turn 4 or turn 5 if we are really lucky with our draws. Having a turn 1 elf, then a turn 2 elf to a turn 3 boja is really scary that we don't need wolves anymore. Putting in wolves in our deck that does not accelerate our game plan just worsens the deck. Even though it gives us a draw, it's not as valuable as finishing the game early. Wolves also does not accelerate our mana base unlike elves and if we are slow, it gives time to the opponent to bypass Boja's ward ability and will be able to kill Boja. That's why speed is the key and will be the main focus of our strategy to smash face as fast as possible. We elf ball into Boja as soon as turn 3 or turn 4. The earlier we attack, the more lethal we can get. We have a few removals but what is more important is the density of our elves and our supporting creatures allowing us to benefit more from Boja's ability to grow our forces. Now, if you saw that video feature that is a turn 4 concede from the opponent and there will be a lot of games like this but also a few games where it gets frustrating if we can't cast Boja fast enough. With that said, let's head to the deck list. On our first pile will be our elf creatures. These elves will help us accelerate our mana base while also giving us mass creature bodies to help Boja's pump ability. On our second pile will be our utility creatures that are not elves but certainly can help our deck win consistently. Here we have Ragaban because he is so strong that most of the time players scoop on a turn 1 Ragaban. We also have Abyssin Pilgrim and Delighted Happily to give us more consistency on our turn 1 even if they are not elves. Absent Falconer will be our main star and our number 1 tutor target. He gives flying to all our creatures that have plus 1 plus 1 counter that can easily be achieved by Boja's ability. Kodama is there to be a backup search to give trample to our forces if we can't find Absent Falconer and Helena and Helena to give haste to Boja. On our third pile will be our control package. You can tweak this as much as you like as this pile will be our flexi slot. On our fourth pile will be our supporting cards that gives benefit to us. We have acceleration like Utopia Scroll, card advantage like Cabaret Rebels, and most importantly, tutors to go find Absent Falconer or Crater Hoop. On our last pile will be our end game cards. Crater Hoop is self-explanatory to all elf ball players out there, while Minsk and Boo is there to serve as a fling card because Boja can easily get into a scary high power and that fling can easily win us the game, while Ember Cleave will be our surprise finisher to give a one-shot kill effect. With that said, I hope you enjoy our build. If you have comments or suggestions on what to feature next, please comment down below. And before we head into our matches, please like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. First lever, this is going to be a problem so we need to be fast here. Awful hand, no turn 1 elf and turn 2, we gotta move this. We can't go turn 1 Rakaban here but we have to keep this, we have a turn 2 and turn 3 elf in play here. Plus we are going on first so we have to keep this. So we're really hoping that the first lever is going to be a little bit slow here. We don't want to see a turn 2 ramp to a turn 3 Wrath of God. Let's play our Lone Speaker here and hopefully it doesn't get killed. This is what we are worried about. Hopefully he doesn't have a sweeper or this will be a fast game for us. Okay, our turn. Let's just play Gwena here. Then attack for 1 damage here. I know we can cast Ragavan instead but I hate overcommitting. Moment of truth if he has a sweeper here. 
A lot of games will be like this. It's really suspenseful if you can't outrace the opponent fast enough or they catch up to you and that's why speed is the real key here. Wow, and the opponent did nothing. We might be running to a counter spell but we have to cast our commander here. Then let's cast our Blood Braid Elf here to widen the board. Another Elf, that's good. It's all or nothing from this point on. Let's attack and chip in for 3. Nice, no sweeper, but we have to worry about the first lever here. Not a removal, that's good for us. I think this is going to be our last turn. Either we can win next turn or lose because he has already has access to a lot of mana here. Holy shit, we drew greater hoop. Can we cast it though? Yes, we can. Let's go, 11-11. No, 15, 15, yeah! And opponent concedes without taking damage. Now guys, that's a lucky draw. That's all we need with this commander, being fast and having good draws. Because if the opponent had another turn, a lot of things could happen to turn around the game from that point on. Aragorn, going to be a banger of a fight. At least we have a turn 1 elf here and Sylvan Ranger to fix our mana, so let's keep. It's always amazing to have a turn 1 elf. Now, if only all our games are like that. Nice, turn 1 Ragavan for the opponent. We have a perfect blocker for that. Let's just play our Sylvan Ranger here and get a basic mounting. That's a brave Ragaban, and here is our perfect blocker for it. We drew a land, and let's play our back alley gardener here. Honestly, I might just cut back alley gardener as he's not really accelerating me unless I play another creature, and his color is really tough to play on turn 2 to get the maximum benefit from him, so I don't know. That's an early Aragorn. Here comes the pain. Let's fetch for a duel here. Play Boja and get another land. Hopefully Boja survives. Storm. This is what's scary about Aragorn is his pump ability and we really have no choice but to take the damage this turn. Let's go Lanuar Visionary here and draw a card and seek a land card. And this is the reason why I don't like Pack Alley Gardener as he only triggers once and the lands comes into play tap. We draw a land so let's play our Blood Braid Elf here. And we hit the perfect cascade. Let's go! And 
That's little flying attack. GG. Versus jury. Let's go. This is a bad hand. We have no early creatures here and we probably don't have time to cast great hench here. Now this is a better hand. We have two early drops here and tribute of the world tree to pump our creatures. So let's keep this. Let's minimize our damage here and just play Temple of Garden Staff. Early creature from the opponent. He will really try to push our life total. I don't really like taking too much damage with this opponent but we have no choice but to grab a shock land here. Let's cast Sylvan Ranger for now as an expendable blocker here. Next turn, let's cast Tribute of the World Tree so our creatures won't be bolted away easily. Let's just block here to minimize the damage. Let's go Utopia Sprawl first, then Tribute of the World Tree here. Opponent is really on the Sacrifice Plan and Descend here. Let's cast Boja here while the War Tree can still protect us. I doubt he can remove Boja unless it's a sacrifice effect. The reason why we cast Boja first is because he is harder to remove versus our elves. And on our following turn, we can cast our elves and benefit from Boja's attack. Of the rebels, that's going to be a problem for us. Let's cast our faceless agent first before we do anything. Nice, we drew Rex Sage, exactly what we need. But we are going to target Smuggler's Copter instead because we can't block it and we still need Edulon to damage him also as he has a low curve deck. Now let's attack here and pump our team. Just took the damage and Edulon here will do some work also with him. He really is on the sacrifice plan here, but I doubt he can kill me. We're still at a high life total. Our turn. Now let's just blow up Adolon here with our Poseju. Because I don't want to get too low and he might surprise me with Bolt or something. Now let's fill the board with Elf so that we can get more Enormous with Boja. Now let's attack with everyone.
And that's a 12-12 Boja. The trample is already lethal here. Opponent still survives. Amazing. And we're down to 5. A bolt here and a lightning strike will end the game for us. Opponent used Suicide Tutor. That's GG. This is a new one. Answerag. How do you pronounce this? Somewhat of a slow hand, but we have swords to plow here, here, so we can answer Answerag. Um, let's keep this. At least we have three elves here. Land go. Same for the opponent. Let's cast Lanoir Lone Speaker here, and hopefully we can draw a land next turn. Opponent is on the slow keep too. Let's cast our district guide here to get a land. Then let's cast Elvish Reclaimer here so we can fill the board with more elves. Is the opponent going for a sweeper here? No? Settle the watch for the opponent? Finally, he's getting some action. Nice, we draw a land. We can go Boja here, but I'm curious on what's the opponent's planning here. Let's play Invasion here just to see. Depends of the heart, so this is what he's planning. Let's remove this for now. Let's cast Buena. Then let's attack our invasion to give us protection. Crisis averted guys. Crisis averted. I don't know what monstrosity his defense of the heart will get. We will never know. Finally cast his commander and he's planning big things so let's always be ready for our swords to plowsh here. Let's cast Boja with Gwena here and mm, we really can't cast Back Alley Gardener first without tapping out and I don't like it. We just go Boja first then Back Alley Gardener. We need to keep the swords up. Fight on our Boja and he's paying the ward. Let's use the invasion here to give Instructable to our team. Let's block here, we have indestructibility and so is our opponent so this will never end unless he doesn't want to attack anymore. Let's use Elvish Reclaimer here.
We really don't have any tech land here, so let's just find any land. Another removal, that's good for us. Let's attack with all and see what he will do. He has a way to give indestructibility to his commander, so we will wait for that before we remove it. This is a big swing opponent, what are you going to do? And there's the gayest gift, now let's remove his commander. And it's still little, good game opponent. Mmm, Emoti, this is going to be a hard match. It's basically whoever is faster is going to win. This is a great opening hand, but I feel like we need some sort of removal to at least delay her. Let's mull, and this is worse. Let's mull again. This is almost the same hand, but at least we have a turn 1 and turn 2 play here. The question now is what to return? I really think it's Imperius perfect to return here. Let's fetch a shock land here and cast Abyssin Pilgrim. And mind you guys, he's not an elf, but still a turn 1 play is still awesome for us. Utopia Sprawl from the opponent, he's going turbo. Not land, I think we're in danger here. Let's play Paradise Druid for now. Lanoir Visionary and next turn it's going to be Emoti and we don't have any removals. Still not land, let's just play Marwin here and hope for the best. There is Emoti. Cascade into Elvish Mystic. And that's already 6 mana from her. Finally a land. Let's think this through. Hopefully Emoti doesn't have any big spells that could wreck us. Let's cast Elvish War Master here to grow Marwin. Then let's cast Boja here. Still not looking great because we are a bit too late now. What do you got opponent? Spelunking? No 6 mana play? I think we still have a chance here. Okay, he has now access to 5 mana, but he has no 2 blue, so we can't worry about time warp. So, what is it going to be opponent? Ashaya? And it's going to be a 9-9? A top land, amazing MTG arena. Let's go Rada here and check if we have an top land on top. No luck and it's swords to plowshares on top. Let me think for a minute guys on what we can cord here for us to win.
We can only court for three so that we can attack with all of our creatures that can attack because we need to end the game fast before she does stupid things. <laughs> I totally forgot about you, Absent Falconer. Guys, this is the answer. Let's attack it all and we are flying! <laughs> and here I thought we are going to lose Absent Falconer effing MVP.